Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel after quite a pause for another search tutorial and in this video I am going to be talking about the FM possibilities this wonderful free synth offers and uh, well I don't think there's much more to say in this introduction so let's get going. So here we are with Surge and it's not so friendly interface, but we are getting a little bit more familiar with it. And uh, here it is. And there's this FM2 oscillators. These are one of the possible algorithms. There are several for every oscillator. And these work as basically every oscillator is a three operator FM synth by itself with the fixed algorithm. How does it work? There is There are two modulators, M1 and M2, and one carrier. In this case, our modulators can have a ratio which you can move here and change among, among integer values. You cannot have uh, fractionary values. You can go from 1 up to 32 and you can control the amount of both, but you can also control a tuning of set between the two and a phase of set between the two, which can have its own effect. And, you know, add some nuance to timbers. And then there's a feedback which is self-explanatory. And it's like, you know, self phase modulation from the oscillator towards itself, and which has, you know, its own effect and gets a lot more stuff going on. Now, uh, since I'm trying to, talk, to, trying to talk about FM and these are, you know, the most basic and simple ones, the ones somehow reminding us of the DX synths, by the way, as some of you might know, if you if you know by yourself or if you watch my video about it, which is titled uh, Why You're Not Doing True Frequency Modulation Synthesis, uh, this is not real true frequency modulation synthesis. This is actually phase modulation, but mm, it works. It really works great. And in my opinion, it's much more handy than real true frequency modulation, be it linear or exponential. Now, uh, one sound we might want to make, which is one of the most classic things to do with uh, with such a synth, is uh, you know one of those uh, sort of eight-ish pianoids, like reminding you of a DX7 or something like that. So I will get this LFO one and turn it into an envelope, as I did, and use it to modulate the amount of modulation from the first from the first modulator. And I will also deform it so that it has this concave curvature, which is a little bit more realistic and reminds somehow of a mechanical instrument. Then I will also get another one because you see, if I want to, if I were programming a DX7 or Dext or, you know, a proper pure FM synthesis, I would find myself having a bunch of envelopes, you know, one envelope per single uh, operator like you have in operator in Ableton, for example. But here I don't. What I have is a bunch of modulators. In this case, these are what they are. They're born as LFOs, but they can become envelopes, as you can see here. And I can go and use them to control the amounts of my various operators. And this is exactly what I'm doing. Now, these have exactly the same, the same amount, the same ratio. So it's not that interesting for now. But then I will see, for example, M1, I would like to keep it to one or maybe put it to three. But M2, I might want to have much higher, say six. Let's go to something odd. less bright and this too I will get a little now we're getting somewhere close but something which is missing is uh, uh, velocity sensitivity and also I might want to use this envelope too to control the feedback of it too you know it had it had this see this little bit of dirt somehow now, uh, if I want this to make this velocity sensitive, uh, if I were programming VITAL or some other 
you know, I wouldn't say more modern synth because this is amazingly modern, but, you know, modernly designed synth, I would be modulating the amount of modulation. In this case, I can't, so I will go modulating the amplitude of these envelopes. It would be nice if, uh, you know, you could do both things on a synth, though it might sound redundant, but it, it really isn't. Anyway, now this is modulated by the velocity, and the same thing I will do with my envelope 1. So I get this to near zero and then get velocity to modulate it and increase it. So now that... And I might also want to do it with volume so that if I play something quiet, it will stay quiet. Now it got a little bit too almost too dark. I might want to add some more modulation now that the amplitude is so low. Kind of works. It is usable, you know, just add some effects uh, and have some fun with it. I mean, it can be just add a simple reverb, add a simple reverb, may put it to 100% because it's in ascend and see. It's already a lot more usable and I could do a lot more. There's lots of effects that go nicely with a sound like this, and you mean this, this multi-effect unit is amazing. You can really, I wouldn't say you can't do wrong because you can't, but there's so much you can do, which, I mean, I'll really leave you to it. Now, uh, this FM2 oscillators can be used in a bunch of other ways, but as you might see, as you might have understood, as I said, there's only these integer ratios. You might have some issues if you want to do something more weird, more, you know, exotic somehow. So let's see, I'm going to turn this into an FM3, which will remove all my modulations, and then try to make something similar somehow in the procedure for making it, but radically different which will be like making, uh, say, a bell. Because the point with how is a bell different to the sound I made? Well, it's well very different, actually. But the thing is, the, the thing is, what makes it mostly different is the fact that you might have some ratios which are not really integer, which are somehow, which somehow sound, you know, distant and unusual. So I will get this to be to a value to, a, you know, something which is integer on the other hand, but still quite high. Let's go to like five, for example. While this other one... Well, this sounds a lot more metallic. And I can go... Now, you might have noticed here that there is an M3 too. Now, M3 as the fact of being a fixed frequency. You know, it doesn't scale with the keyboard. So you, you might want to add some of this. Maybe I might want to add a new, another envelope again to be controlled by this. Or no, well, let me just do it with the, with the filter envelope, just because I have it already. There's no need to go and use another envelope. Though, you see, I have the problem that I cannot scale my filter envelope with the velocity. While I can scale those envelopes, I cannot scale this. See, this has become... There's this pre-delay. And it's already quite bellish. I mean, I, I can tell you I've made way better bells than this, but this is, you know, I just, just going around, I didn't have any specific idea of where to go. This is, you know, somewhere to go around here. There is a bell. Yeah, I think you, you know there is a bell around here. Now, 
uh, if I want, this is not all I can do as far as FM goes with the synth, because there is all this area, this oscillator FM routine. You know, while I can use single oscillators as um, as FM, uh, as multi operator small FM synths, I can also go and actually I did it wrong. I needed this one to stay FM2, but I wanted oscillator 1 to become a classic oscillator. So let's say, you know, here I have a sawtooth, and I can, if I add here some frequency modulation, I can add some, some uh, frequency modulation from this other operator. For reasons I fail to understand, it's not working. I don't know, this is one of those things which is weird about this synth, and now it is. And here we are. So, I can also add some unison, and you know, if I want to make some something really disturbing. And now you see what I'm doing here is just using an FM2 operator to modulate, to modulate my first operator. I can modulate this with whatever I want. I can change the ratio and have it sound different. Or however you want. Notice we are only listening to the first oscillator. The second oscillator is purely is just being is just being used as a modulator. So this is all we hear. This is all FM. I could be making something sensible, something which you know makes some sense out of this logic. But you see, there's so many. You can you know you you can get all this growling, horrible sounds out of it, which are interesting. I mean, if if you if that's what you're into. And you know, if you just add some a little bit of filtering, they get very usable in a bunch of contexts, be it, you know, some cinematic, horrific alien sound design or just an EDM track. Just to give you an example, I made this thing some time ago, which is based on that and on a bandpass filter. <laughs> Which, you know, does its job, I guess. And, yep, there is... I mean, there might be a lot more about this synth. I mean, I'm really, really no kidding. There's... there's it's, there's, it's a big, deep, deep rabbit hole. Also, you know, I have did it in this way, you know, using an FM operator to modulate uh, the frequency of a, a, a more complex operator, but I can do the other way around. Say, for example, here I get operator 2, I, oscillator 2, sorry, which now is going to become an operator. I can get an, a, a, wave ta a wave table, maybe a complex wave table, whatever, you know, anything. I can go for any wave table I like. I have no idea what I'm, what I'm looking for, really. I mean, just pink elephant. I have no idea how it sounds, really. I mean, it's just a complex thing here. And now, if I get this FM here to be active, not actually listening to this one, we're listening to a sine wave being modulated. And even here, we can add unison. This will not add stereo opening. But we'll get a sense of detuning uh, anyway. And you know, if you go, just go for a different... For a different wavetable, you will get a completely different sound. Now this, for example, I find it's kind of nice if I used it, get this filter envelope, for example, to be in a situation like this. I could use it to modulate this morph. And 
and this already is, in my opinion, quite interesting. I mean, just get yourself a reverb, it's a crazy reverb here. And maybe a delay of a frequency shifter here. Okay, I'm gonna go for a frequency shifter. And just like, let's go this building robot monkey, which is kind, kind of nice. I could go for a simple for a simpler delay. This is a little bit too a little bit too unknown for this thing. Let's go for just rhythmic three. I have no idea how this is. Yeah, kinda good. not using any filter we, we we still could i mean it's still quite it's still quite an easy thing to do i mean i could get a com filter here and use it as um, and say put it to yeah 50 percent wet i want it to be 50 percent wet precise tunings 100 percent to keep tracking but not by filter envelope i need to remove this and get keep 100 percent keeper tracking some resonance and maybe another lfo one LFO, I am not using any LFOs for now to window modulate the just a little bit, just a little bit, not so much, just a little bit. Seems like a usable sound to me, you know, like it's one, maybe adding some release would help. Anyway, yep, I uh, did a few things and, you know, don't, don't forget, I'm using a wavetable here, but I can use any of these algorithms, both as a modulator or as a carrier, because here I'm modulating only a sine wave. I mean, this could be... Could make things arbitrarily more complex using this envelope or other envelopes. Say, for example, I might want to use the amp envelope for this one. Say, I controlling adding a no, 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 okay, amp envelope. Just a little bit of feedback, a little bit of this, and a little bit of this one. But then I'm gonna get them both to be lower. It works, at least. So, this is it. And there's Mimi right behind me who loves listening to this. I mean, she would, but she is not listening to anything because I am here in my headphones. And that's probably the reason why she's leaping comfortably and not attacking me. Anyway, uh, thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe even you learned something. There's going to be more videos on this channel about it. So if you liked it, I mean, you find it enjoyable to hear a man with mustache talk about synths, just, just click here on the subscribe button and you will be informed anytime I make another video. If you are interested in anything else of what I do, you can check in the description. There's a bunch of links to Deep Tone Production I'm working with, to my music, to my Gumroad, where you can get a bunch of patches. And don't, if you liked it or you didn't like it, well, just feel free to write me a comment or request whatever you want. What do you want me to talk about next? Let's keep talking about Surge, or should I get back to Vital? I mean, I can tell you by my amount of, um, by the amount of engagement with my videos that Vital does, does seem to get a lot more interest than Surge, but I really like Surge. I think it's an interesting synth. It's a very overlooked synth. I mean, though there's a bunch of people who made videos about it, but it's quite overlooked and um, actually very, very powerful and deep. I'm very, very happy to be talking about it. So, all this said, thank again, thanks again for your attention and 
bye see you at the next video